Do you want the best settings for rank play or MW2? Well, I got the secret stuff and these are all very important. As you can see, I'm currently 35 in the world. I am in the top 250 and these settings make a big difference. Let's get into it. So we're going to try to cruise through these as quickly as possible, but I'll explain when I need to. For display mode, make sure it's full screen exclusive. This is very important. And your screen refresh rate is on whatever your Hertz is, minus 240, so 239.9. And make sure your VSIG gameplay is off. This is going to hurt your frames if you have that on. For your quality, I do like Fidelity Cast. This basically sharpens up the game. So I have this on and on 100. Now, you do lose a little FPS with this, but to me, it's worth it. Video memory scale on 90. This is going to help reduce crashes and it's very recommended. You can kind of copy these settings if you like. Normal, normal, high, high, low, very low. Bullet impacts off. Uh, damage layers off. Shooter quality low, off. Max off. Streaming quality low, low, off, off. And a lot of these settings are off or low because I want the most FPS possible. But also some of them you see like a normal, medium to also have the quality not be so bad. Low, off, low, ultra, low, off off low off and now for nvidia reflex low latency now people like it on plus boost but it's usually recommended just to have it on on like boost it's not necessary if you want you can put it on if you feel like it helps step the field off world motion blur off weapon motion blur off now these two things are pretty big because your game looks blurry when you have these things on it will affect your aim it'll affect your vision and you definitely want to have these things on and film grain on zero you do not want to have your screen grainy now in multiplayer i definitely recommend a lower fov usually between i'll say 95 90 95 to like 110 max which is currently what i play on uh there's this theory that playing on 103 or lower gives you more aim assists if you are on controller shout out to my controller players so I, I I understand it, but to me, I like 110. I like being zoomed out a little bit more. Feeling too close gets me, I don't know, this feels weird. ADS field of view affected. This is going to help basically lower your visual recoil. Now, this matters more when you're in higher FOV, and this basically zooms out your iron sight, zooms out your aim, and gives you less visual recoil, which is really nice. I have my weapon field of view on default, but I like wide or default. They both have pros and cons. Like the wide, it kind of it shrinks your gun so like you can see more of your screen. But also when it's smaller, it kind of blocks the center of your screen, if that makes sense. So you can kind of mess around with it. I recommend default or wide. I have it on 30. Uh, this actually doesn't matter at all. Now, this next setting is very important. First person camera movement. You want this all the way down to 50 percent. This is going to lower visual recoil as well, because when you have this at 100 percent, which is the default, which is horrible. It's going to shake your screen. You do not want that. Next for controller. Now I play on flip, so I'll have this on. And the big things is sensitivity. I recommend a lower sensitivity, especially in multiplayer, especially in ranked. And this is going to help one, have your shot more consistent and two, your centering is going to be better, which is extremely important when it comes to aiming. So I play on 77.85. If I was competing still, if I was in a pro league and playing, I would probably be on 661. I think that is like the most common sensitivity you've seen in Pro League, and it's very, very good. You're fast, but you're also not too fast, where your centering is good and your shot is good. So 661, I play on 770.85, which basically means when I move around, it's a little bit faster, but my ADS sense is close to six. So my shot is still very pristine. And like I said, I would recommend between six to eight. I wouldn't go higher than eight, honestly, because it's gonna affect your aim and you should be good. I do run automatic tactical sprint, but I will warn you in this game, tactical sprinting can be bad sometimes because the TTK is fast and the sprint out time is slower with your gun when you're on your tactical sprint versus regular sprint or walking. So that is the con to it. Now, automatic tactical sprint does make your movement more fluid and it also allows you to camera people a little bit easier. So that is the good thing about it, but be careful when using that setting. For aim assist type, I do run default. Black Ops was recommended at the start of the game, but it received a small nerf and now it just feels weird using it. I personally just, it throws me off whenever I use it. It feels like this very sticky, slow aim on players and I just can't stand it. I feel like it affects my aim in a negative way. And yeah, sometimes it helps you get some crazy beam or shot, but I feel like I can do the same with default and it doesn't throw me off, which I really like. For aim response curve type, a huge one, dynamic, dynamic, dynamic. Most pro players are running dynamic. People have been running dynamic ever since it's come out. Warzone people run dynamic. Dynamic is just such a good setting. It basically slows down. It starts from slow to fast and then it slows down at the end. This helps snap on people. You know, when you're like moving your aim, trying to snap on people, 
this helps a lot. So you definitely want dynamic on. Next, input dead zone. And this is something I want to talk about briefly. I have my left stick minimum on 0.02 and my right stick minimum on 0.04. This is going to make my stick more responsive. As soon as I move them, they're responding quicker, right? Now my left stick max on 0.9. That is my left stick, my movement stick. So it's going to respond slightly quick, quicker at the end. So basically, whenever I sprint, it's like think of it like the max is all the way when you move your stick to whatever end you want to move it to. It, it cuts it down a little bit. So like it, move, it gets to the max quicker, if it, that makes sense. The left stick max, you can mess around with a little bit. You don't necessarily need to have it this high. Like in Warzone, I definitely had it lower. Like in Warzone, I would have like 0.75. You know, you can mess around with it. Like I could put it 0.85 right now if I'd like. And it definitely helps. And then my right stick max, you don't want to touch this. You want to leave this default because this will mess with your aim a little bit and not in a good way. It can, but it's just too inconsistent. And then left trigger, right trigger, make sure this is on zero. Now, another way to kind of get around the automatic tactical sprint while being able to walk around and not get affected with that slow sprint to fire speed is tactical sprint behavior. So instead of having it on double tap and you can have automatic tactical sprint off, you put it on single tap run. Now, basically what this is going to do is uh, you click it once and instead of having to click it twice, you automatically get into the automatic tactical sprint. And this is definitely another way of, you know, having an advantage in movement, but not having to run automatic tactical sprint. Now, grounded mantle off, automatic airborne mantle partial and automatic ground mantle off. This is going to help reduce those random mantles, you know, just random, just mantling random objects on the map, which is very frustrating. You definitely want these things like this. And this is another crazy setting that I personally love, inverse slide and dive behavior. We all know sliding is kind of bad in this game. It's not good at all, but diving is actually very effective for many reasons. You can dive off ledges and use to kind of do this movement called the D hop. You can check out my movement video. I'll talk about it a little bit or you can, you know, dive away versus sliding, you know, it saves your life a lot. So diving is pretty good in this game. And basically what this does is right now, if you have it on default, it's hold to, to dive and just click into slide but it flips it. You just click it once to dive. So it's like tap to dive. So instead of having to hold it, it's instant. So in those hot situations or the situation where you're trying to run away or you need that instant movement, like it just makes your movement more fluid and allows you to escape easier. In the interface, there's a couple settings that I want to go over briefly. They're actually kind of important. One, you want your HUD to be a, a little bit closer to the center, like to your screen, so you can see your mini map a little easier. So I have it currently on 50 50. You want the square over the circle and the mini map shape because the square is bigger, as you can see. It looks a little bit bigger than a square, so you're able to, than a circle, so you're able to see more on the mini map. And then you want to make sure you have center dot on. Now this is pretty cool. It's basically you're in the middle of your crosshairs, in the middle of your screen. You're always gonna have this dot, which allows you to help with your centering and kind of like snap on people, right? So turn on center dot, and then I have mine on default. You can kind of see the sizes on the on the right. Like it will show you like how big the dot is. So the higher you put it. I like larger. Larger feels pretty good, but then it looks like weird. It looks kind of fake. So I prefer default. Large is just too big, but this is something you definitely can mess around with it, and I think it helps. And lastly, the audio. A very important thing about MW2 and rank play. You can hear everything. The footsteps are pretty loud, and it's a problem. But we run home theater. Uh, home theater just seems like you can. it's more directional. You can kind of hear where the footsteps are coming from, and you do got to have your volume kind of loud to really hear those footsteps, but it feels pretty nice when being used. I got my master volume on 70, music on zero. You don't want to hear music, dialogue on 50, effects volume on 100, and voice chat volume on 14. Just kind of personal preference, you know, if you want to hear the people in game chat. But this helps me just kind of hear the sound, hear the, you know, the footsteps as well as I can. And obviously, the higher you put the sound, you got to be careful you don't put it too loud or hurt your ears, but you hear the footsteps pretty damn well. If you got this far, thank you for so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps me out a ton. As always, I stream at twitch.tv slash apathy. You can catch me live, follow the stream, and I'll catch you guys in the next video for more tips and tricks. Peace.